Before starting today's video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video to encourage us to provide the best. This story takes us back to 2002, a time when Craigslist was in its natural years, and many people might not know much about it. Back then, it was quite different from what it is today. It served as an online garage sale where people would list old items that still had some value and were willing to give them away for free. I happened to have a basketball hoop, a hockey net, and a spoiler for my car, all of which were in perfect condition and available for free. My son and I had been eagerly searching for a hockey net so that we could practice in the cul-de-sac where we lived. This was before we came across the free hockey net that I mentioned earlier. Luckily, we found an ad on Craigslist for a slightly used, regulation-size hockey goal for only $50. The seller even included a puck and two slightly used hockey sticks. I still have a picture of that ad to this day. It seemed like the perfect deal, but the seller lived about two hours away. I called the number he had listed, and he sounded like a normal guy on the phone, with a deep, dark voice. He agreed to meet halfway and he put the stuff in the back of his pickup truck. However, he could only meet after he got off from work, which was much later in the day and way past dark. We agreed to meet at a rest stop off the highway. My son, who was 11 years old at the time, and I took my wife's minivan, the only car that would be able to fit the large hockey net. We arrived at the truck stop within an hour, and it was empty at this late hour. Three big light posts provided decent illumination, and I parked my car right under one of them. As scheduled, a pickup truck pulled in off the highway and stopped in front of me. I went over to his window, but then I noticed that there was nothing in the back of his truck. Are you Steve? He asked me. Yep, that's me. I replied. All right. My buddy's bringing in the stuff with his truck, he said. The guy pulled up behind my car and put it in park. Suddenly, I had a bad feeling. I told my son to get back in the car and lock every door except mine. Two more pairs of headlights came off the highway into the lot, and not surprisingly, there was no hockey equipment in either of them. My heart was racing and I was worried, not for myself but for my young son, who my wife had for some reason brought with me on this trip. A group of large men with heavy set and muscular physiques stepped out of the two pickup trucks behind the first one. They eyed me from head to toe, giving me that typical intimidation stare down. Then, a bald guy wearing sunglasses said in a deep voice, Where's the money? I instantly pulled out my wallet and handed it to him, begging him to let me and my son go. He pulled out around a hundred dollars and was visibly angry expecting more. He then sent two of his goons to get my son. At this point, I screamed and begged him not to take him. One of the men broke the glass of the minivan back door, and I vividly remember the disturbing, heartbreaking screams of my young son. After what I can only describe as a miracle from God, my prayers were answered. A car entered the lot from the highway, and all the men immediately stopped what they were doing and turned to look. As it got closer, my heart leaped with excitement as I saw that it was a police car. The lights suddenly began to flash as he got close enough to see what was going on. Within seconds, all the men were back in their trucks and speeding off down the highway, at least two of them. The truck in the back was caught immediately by the police car and backup arrived shortly after. I explained everything to the police and they quickly caught the men who were caught and rode out to get the others. Surprisingly, the guys in the back truck weren't very loyal to their supposed leader, if they even had one. Believe it or not, I had a police escort all the way home to make me and my son feel safer. I don't want to go into all the legal stuff, but I'll just say that all of those men except for one were caught, and I'm pretty sure that was the driver of the first pickup truck. Needless to say, my Craigslist days were far from over, but I've always been much more protective of my son and much more cautious of Craigslist meetings since then. 
My mother and stepdad work as ranchers. Recently, they purchased a new work truck and decided to sell their old one. A lady from a rural area located four hours away expressed interest in buying it, but claimed that she couldn't travel halfway to pick it up. Despite her excuses, my stepdad, being overly kind, convinced my mother to follow him in a second vehicle so he could drive the truck to her. My mother, however, was skeptical of the lady from the start. When they arrived, the woman provided a complicated explanation about bank issues and presented a post-dated check. She also begged my stepdad to leave the plates under his name. My mother, realizing something was off, confronted my stepdad about accepting the check and argued that they should cancel the plates. Despite her objections, they ended up accepting the check but canceled the plates. When the check bounced, the woman ignored their phone calls and provided a series of confusing excuses. My stepdad, for once, refused to back down and informed her that they would be reclaiming the truck. So they drove another four hours with a flatbed, just in case parts were missing, but nobody answered the door when they arrived at the property. They located the truck in a shed and loaded it onto the flap. While my stepdad was securing the load, my mother, unable to contain her frustration, wrote a note expressing her dissatisfaction and slipped it under the woman's door. Fifteen minutes into their drive back home, the phone rang and the woman claimed to know their exact location and threatened them for their actions. Two days later, my stepdad woke up to the sound of someone breaking in through his bedroom window. I could hear my mother screaming from my room, and it was one of the most terrifying moments of my life. It was the woman, armed with a knife, who had come to exact her revenge. Miraculously, my stepdad managed to overpower her, despite her weapon. The incident was reported to the police, and the woman was arrested. As they say, karma can be a powerful force. At one point in my life, I resorted to using the Men Seeking Women and One Night Stand sections of Craigslist when I was 28. Most of the posts seemed fake or featured unattractive women, but I stumbled upon a posting with a picture of a cute brunette woman. She was just a normal, decent-looking woman, which made the whole thing more believable. The listing stated that she was a 26-year-old female looking for a quick hookup with no strings attached. She left her number on the bottom, and I immediately texted her. I noticed that she had an iPhone, as my image sent a blue bubble within seconds. She replied with a simple hi, introducing herself as Jen, but said that I could call her Jenny. We flirted a bit until she gave me her address. I wasn't sure if I should feel excited or ashamed as I grabbed my car keys. Within minutes, I arrived at a relatively unlit dead-end block in an unappealing area. I texted Jenny to ask which house was hers, and she responded with 209, the last house by the dead end. I pulled up to the last house on the street and saw the number 209 stamped onto the house. I won't lie, it was a tiny single-floor house with tall grass. As I got out of my car, I realized what I was doing. I walked up to Jenny's door, but nobody answered. Suddenly, my phone vibrated, and I received a text from Jenny telling me to go around the back. I asked why, but she didn't respond. Despite my better judgment, I made my way over to the wooden gate and latched it open. I walked slowly into the backyard and froze. When I looked up at the dark house's windows, I saw someone staring down at me from one of the top windows. When they noticed me, they moved away, and the blinds closed. I assumed it must have been Jenny. My phone vibrated, and she texted me, telling me she'd be right out after brushing up. I was shaking with nerves and the weirdness of the situation. I thought I heard a stick crack further in the yard, so I turned on my iPhone's flashlight and aimed it towards the corner of the yard. My heart stopped when I saw an arm moving behind the wooden shed. I turned off the flashlight and silently left the yard. As I got into my car, I heard a window from the house slam open. I heard a deranged sounding woman scream, wait, don't go. As I pulled away from the house, the front door opened 
and I heard a loud popping sound. I quickly drove away, but after about five blocks, I realized I had a flat tire. They had shot my tire. I tried to get my car as far away from the town as possible before calling roadside service to set up my spare tire. The repairman found the bullet in the flat tire and believed my story. He even vouched for me in front of a cop. Three people were arrested, one filthy-looking woman and two redneck-looking men. They stood trial and were found guilty, but I don't remember what for. It's funny, they were too stupid to evacuate the house after pulling something like that. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and sharing it to support me. The best is yet to come.